Steve Reel here. Back in August of 2020, a bad lightning storm sent a high voltage spike back through my DSL line and burned up the modem and a bunch of my electronics, including my inverter and my solar power system. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but then I went to replace that inverter and I was trying to stay under $1,000 and I found something that is so much better than what I was using before and I didn't even know it existed. So it actually turned out for the best. This is that new inverter, the Growatt SPF 3000TL LVM48P. I know, not the easiest name to remember. Now it works with a 48 volt battery system. It takes the DC from the battery and turns it into 120 volts of AC, pure sine wave, up to 3000 watts. I designed this system to be a backup power system when the grid is out and to lower our monthly power bill. We use it to run our computers, electronics, even charge my electric car, uh, the refrigerator, and even some air conditioning units. Now we do have very efficient air conditioning units that have variable speed compressors in them. I'll show you those in another video. Let's look at my entire system and how I'm using the GrowWatt inverter. And later we'll look at some other ways that you can use it. And speaking of which, this is a good time for the obligatory disclaimer. disclaimer. Number one, this video is for educational purposes only. Now this is how I designed my system, but your needs may be different. Do your own due diligence. Number two, electricity is freaking dangerous. If you aren't comfortable working with electricity, please get an electrician. Be sure to obey all local building codes and laws, but by all means, stay safe. Number three, the parts and components that I used are linked in the description below. I've used affiliate links whenever possible. I'll never recommend anything that I don't believe in though. Three years ago, I built the first array of solar panels using these Renogy 160 watt panels. A year later, I built the second array using these high-tech panels that I found on eBay. So the first array, array A, using the Renogy panels, um, gets about 2400 watts. Array B, uh, even though it's only using 12 panels, they're higher wattage of 200 watts. And that gets me a total of 2400 watts also. The total system is 4800 watts. Now, in the real world, no one ever gets the rated wattage of your panels. So what I'm actually getting is about 3300 watts in the peak of the day. The panels are wired together in series into what are called strings. Then these strings are combined together through these combiner boxes and the output is sent to the house. So we have a positive and a negative from array A and a positive and negative from array B. I'm using 8 gauge PV cable for that. Those cables come in through this DC breaker box from Midnight Solar. Now each cable gets its own DC breaker. Here's the negative from array A and array B. And here's the positive from array A and from array B. From the breakers, we go to these two Victron solar chargers. One charger for array A and another charger for array B. Now, I just want to point out that the GrowWatt has its own 80 amp MPPT solar charger built right in. I didn't use it because a couple of reasons. One is I already have two arrays. I'd have to completely reconfigure that. Uh, and second, my battery is not a 48 volt system, which is really what the GrowWatt is set up for. My battery is a 46 volt nominal battery. It's a little unusual. They're recycled Chevy Volt batteries. I'll show you those in a second. Anyway, these Victrons give me more flexibility with the lower voltage battery. Most people could just use the built-in charger in the GrowWatt, vastly simplify your system, eliminate chargers, and all that extra wiring. Okay, so back to this. From the chargers, we go to this box and through two breakers, one for A and one for B again, and that feeds down to the bus bars, which feed the batteries. So this box contains six Chevy Volt modules. Now, they're sold as a 48-volt module, but they're actually a 46-volt nominal battery. Anyway, I have six of them in here. They're all wired up in parallel to the bus bars, 
and each battery also has its own fuse right on the positive terminal. The negative side of the battery comes out and goes through this disconnect switch and then to the shunt. The shunt also acts as a bus bar and all of the negatives from the inverter and also the chargers all tie together here. Uh, the shunt also helps measure the current going in and out of the battery and goes to the Victron battery monitor. The positive side of the battery goes through this big 175 amp breaker which also acts as an emergency disconnect and that feeds the positive side of the inverter. The inverter turns the DC power from the battery into pure sine wave 120 volt AC. The AC comes out and goes into this breaker box. The first breaker goes to some outlets just below. These are GFCI outlets and run computers, hard drives, uh, internet, battery chargers for phones, iPads, power tools, yard tools, all sorts of things right here in the office. This breaker goes to the electric car charger outside. This third breaker goes to the transfer switch in the utility room and connects to the household sub panel. Now this is one of the things that I like the most about the GrowWatt 3000 TL. It is designed to be connected to your household electrical system. In fact, it shares the ground and the neutral with your household AC. Now I want to be clear here, this is not a grid tied inverter. You do not sell power back to the grid. And by using a transfer switch, you cannot accidentally backfeed to the grid, which is dangerous for linemen and also illegal. Okay, so whatever you do, do not connect the inverter output directly to an existing grid-tied breaker panel. Either use a transfer switch for that, or just put in a new breaker panel and outlets exclusively for the inverter. Okay, and because we are properly uh, grounded and that the neutral and the ground are bonded, uh, because of the way we're wired through the uh, transfer switch into the house electricity. I'm going to be able to take this tester right here and it will show up correct. It'll be the center will be on green. Um, a lot of, uh, actually I would say most under thousand dollar inverters are going to show up as an open neutral and a lot of you have already experienced that on, on uh, other inverters. So anyway, let's put this in and there you go. It's properly wired. And the Grow What inverter also has an AC input. It's totally optional. You don't have to have it connected at all. Uh, right now mine is not connected and as I connect it you will see an icon appear that looks like a power pole. Alright, the grid AC is connected but it's not doing anything yet. We're going to change that right now. And we are looking at the display. And you can see right here that our battery is currently powering the um, inverter. And that inverter is then running the loads. If my solar arrays were attached to the uh, GrowWatt, you would see an icon here for a solar panel. And you'd also see it connected to a charger. And this is our, our utility, which we're going to see connect in a minute when we get done. We're going into the settings and we're in SBU mode and that solar battery utility in that order we're going to run on solar or battery power until the battery drops to a certain level and then it will switch to utility and you set that level that the battery will switch on setting number 12 and it's currently set for 44 and right now our battery level is about 47.7 so we're going to change this and force it to switch over to utility And you just do this by moving the up and down and hit enter every time you've got the number that you want. And we'll set it to 47.7. Hit enter again. And it takes it. And there we're going to go back, escape to the main display. And you can see our current battery voltage is about 47.7. Okay, so my solar panels were producing more power than we were using on the inverter. So I've turned off the, um, the solar chargers right now, my Victrons, so that we're just draining the battery right now. 
and I'm going to speed up this video and get to the point where just before we switch over to the utility power okay and here we are uh, notice that the light is blinking right now there we go now the voltage is starting to drop and they're just switched over and the green light in the upper left that was blinking a second ago has now gone solid telling us we're on grid power and from the utility pole icon you see a line that's connected to the load showing us that we're now running our loads off of the utility power okay, so this SBU setting is the way that I run my grow watt basically means I'm running on solar power and battery unless the battery gets really low and then it switches over to utility and protects the battery so now let's take a look at another way that you might be able to run your system. Now let's look at utility mode, which is like a giant UPS system. In other words, you run your loads off of the utility. If the grid goes out, the battery backup takes over. And we're going to go into this first setting and change it from SBU mode to utility mode. And really, that's all there is to it. We'll go back to the main display. And there, it just switched over. So now we're on utility mode. Okay, to simulate a power outage, I'm going to disconnect the AC power from the grow watt right now. And there we go. You can now see that we're running back on the battery again and the inverter. Okay, and in this mode, the solar panels, or the solar charger, is optional. You can hook that up if you want to, um, or you can just charge your batteries back up off of the grid. You can also use the Grow Watt totally off-grid if you wanted to uh, put it in an off-grid cabin, or you just say you wanted to have a workshop or a shed in your backyard. You could just take the output of the grow watt, run it to a breaker box, and run your outlets off of that. You would need to add a ground rod and you would bond your neutral and ground in the breaker box. Another really cool thing about the grow watts is you can hook multiple units together. Um, each one of the inverters comes with a set of cables that hooks to ports right on the bottom. And this allows the, they, them to communicate with each other and stay in sync. You can hook multiple units together. You can hook two together. And instead of 3,000 watts, you now have 6,000 watts. You can hook up to six units together and get 18,000 watts. You can also hook two units together in split phase. And now you have 6,000 watts, but at 240 volts. And you can do that all the way up to six units with three on each phase. It's just incredibly cool. Let's wrap up the review of the uh, Grow Watt. First we'll do the pros. Uh, this unit is a great bang for the buck. I really don't know of anything else in that price range that gives you all these features and at this build quality. It's a really well built machine. Um, also, it works with your household AC, which um, a lot of times you can only find that in the higher priced inverters that are out there. It has a built in solar charger. It's very flexible in the ways that you can use it. Um, and also, you can combine multiple units together and uh, add more power or add a split phase or even three phase. And it's lightweight and easy to work with. Cons The wiring access is a little tight when you open up the panel to uh, add your uh, your wiring it's a little difficult to get your hand in there to hold the wire while you're tightening it down it's just a little bit tight but still doable and also the programming settings could be way better they're a little confusing um, you have to basically keep referring back to the manual when you're looking at some of the settings in there it just tells you a number and then it shows you a number that a number of volts or something but you don't know what you're actually looking at unless you refer back because they don't tell you on the display itself what it is that you're looking at. Uh, anyway, the very next video that I do, I'm going to go through all the programming settings of the display, um, and that might help a few folks out also. Anyway, overall, this thing is a great unit, and I highly recommend it. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.